Uh, we have mics today, so if you have a question, just please raise your hand for the mic. Blame your shirt. <laughs> well, uh, obviously I grew up in Kansas, been a Chiefs fan as long as I can remember. Um, so, Super Bowl Sunday's coming up, obviously. And I was encouraged to wear this shirt. I usually don't do this type of stuff, but uh, proud of my Chiefs. And um, it's the only really team that I follow that I act crazy with as a fan. So, live and die on every play and, and uh, excited about them and happy for Andy Reid and, and, the, and the team. And I got a ton of, obviously, all my buddies back home. We've lived and died for years on the Chiefs. So, it's a pretty good time for us right now. Hopefully, we can pull it off on Sunday. Mark, uh, right here. Uh, to start off with, with, with the work that Aaron's done here over the last couple weeks, I know that was a concern at, at some points here this season, and obviously since the Iowa game, it's been he's been pretty good. What have you seen has changed? Has it just simply been a little more assertiveness? Uh, what in particular have you seen on a day-to-day -day basis that's different now? Well, I, I think what we've tried to do is um, <clears throat> instill confidence in Wiggs and um, let him realize how important he is to us and just to relax and have fun. And, and um, we've kind of done that with the whole team. If you guys go back to my press conferences from the first one right after Christmas, I, I start talked about instilling confidence in our guys. And um, <clears throat> it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's a, it's a work in progress. So uh, we got more guys playing better, more guys playing uh, with confidence. And, um, you know, recently, and we still have some work to do, but uh, Wiggs is just, you know, he's hit some the step back three was huge the other day. And, and um, you know, at the last media timeout, I told him I you know, he missed those two wide open ones in the corner. We had great offense and got wide open looks. And I said, you're going to make your next one. You know, just keep shooting. And um, you just try to give these guys confidence. And I, I don't know if it was two press, press conferences ago or one or whatever. I said, who knows, we might become the best three point shooting team in the country. And I'm sure everybody looked at me like I was crazy. But we have made 25 in our last two games. so. Kind of changed who we are, and uh, guys are playing with more confidence, not only Eric, but a lot of guys. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C., Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301 251 2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Do you feel like uh, Jalen's awareness of and kind of a maturity about being so important to the team has, has grown as, as this year has gone on? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think he kept looking over his shoulder for Bruno. Um, you know, Bruno kind of carried the torch last year. And, and um, there was you know, a lot of pressure on Jalen um, this year coming in with, you know, with our team and, and him and everything. And, I think it took him a long time to kind of grow into that role, and now he's got his, he's playing with terrific confidence. His defense has been really good for a long time, um, but his offense has been terrific here lately. So, yeah, I, I think he I think he feels comfortable. But you know, in the Big Ten this year, the the, the bigs are terrific, and so each and every night it's a battle. We got I know someone's going to ask me about guards. Obviously, he's to me he's been Player of the Year in the league so far, and he's a, he's a tough load. So it's another really Tough matchup for Jalen, you know, tomorrow night. You talked about, you know, confidence throughout the year, and you just mentioned it with Jalen and Aaron, but just, you know, with the team overall after picking up the two road wins, especially at a place like Assembly Hall, have you seen them respond over the past couple of days? Well, I, I think, you know, our guys were really proud of themselves, what they accomplished on, sun, on Sunday. Um, we played a team that played really well in their building in a tough building and we've still figured out at the very end to come out one point ahead. So that gave us confidence, but you know, our whole, we don't try to get too high and get too low. Um, you know, it's unfortunately in today's world, you lose a game and the world's coming to an end, you win, it's the greatest thing ever, but we try to stay even keel and just keep trying to get better. We know we have deficiencies and things that we got to get better at. And uh, so our guys practice, we practiced pretty well yesterday. Not, not great, but um, you know, I know our guys will be focused in uh, for the game Thursday, and you know we just talked about you know don't take for granted you're just going to win at home. You still got to go out and earn it and things like that. But our guys are more confident individually. I met with a couple guys before practice yesterday, and, you know, or, or after, and, and we're still building confidence with, with with certain guys. So it's 
you know, but we're heading in the right direction. Not, not to uh, beat this confidence thing to the ground, but in terms of confidence, how does a coach instill confidence and is there a fine line between allowing a kid to play through, you know, especially this time of year, if it's playing through mistakes or playing through a shooting slump like Aaron did and, and not letting it affect the overall team? Well, that, that's the hard part. And, um, you know, when we were all struggling a little bit and uh, it really was just one game um, since Christmas, uh, it affected us uh, as a team. But now our guys get it. Our guys know how important each player is to it. Our guys respect each other. So, um, you know, as a coach, I believe in our guys. I think they know I believe in them. And um, if I didn't believe in Wiggs, I would have taken him off the floor after he missed those other two. Um, but I looked him in the eye, and the last time I said, you're going to make your next one, and he did. So you just got to believe in guys, give them confidence. Today's world's a lot different um, with social media and the things that they have to go through. So it's you just really have to constantly you know, coach them up and build them up and, and be positive, but don't make them think they're, you know, something special type deal and, and, and do it within the framework of the team. And I think our guys are doing a good job with that. Mark, uh, going back to the first half against Indiana on Sunday, you guys had nine threes. I believe it was something like 11 assists on 14 buckets. Um, is that, A, is that the best you've seen this team play this year? And, and B, how do you communicate to your guys to try and uh, play that way for a full 40 minutes? Well, it looked really good because we were making our shots. Now, we had a lot of those same shots in the second half we didn't make, right? So, and then we missed a couple layups in the second half. We missed seven opportunities at the foul line in the second half. So, it's kind of who we are. Uh, but we played closer to 40 minutes than we played in a while, um, which was good. Um, the key is we went on the road, we had 11 turnovers in two games, okay? So, we've been working on taking care of the ball since two, April of two years ago when our season ended. We were 19 and whatever we were that year. We've really worked hard on turnovers. It shows you how the process, how long it takes, and we got some upperclassmen that are doing a good job with it now. So that that was really the key. Um, and then I went through every possession twice after the Indiana game. We really had like two bad possessions the whole game. I mean, and even some of the turnovers weren't you know bad possessions type deals. So I was really encouraged by that. And you know now it's a whole other animal coming up with Iowa. They can three two. They can two three. They can match up. They can play man. Can switch screen, you know, they do a lot of different things. So it's just us playing with it ourselves, recognizing defenses, and continuing to share the ball. Hey, Mark. Um, first of all, yeah, go Chiefs. Thanks. As you as you watch Jalen, you know, we we from what we see, you know, he's been a pretty low key guy just emotionally on the yeah. court through his first couple of years, and then lately we've seen more of that. Have you as the level of play, his high level of play coinciding with more emotion coming out? Does it, do they go hand in hand together? Yeah, I think so. It's just, it's a confidence, it's a bravado thing um, for him. And it's, it's kind of good to see. He's such a, he's such a good kid. And, um, and, you know, there's part of me that loves when he acts the way he, you know, gets excited and all that kind of stuff. But there's a lot on his plate. He's handled it well. He feels really good about himself um, with the things that he's doing. So um, he'll learn from what happened Sunday and uh, he'll be better with it. But I don't want to take away the emotion and the enthusiasm uh, that he needs to play with. He's just got to channel it the right way. Got time for two more guys. One left and then done. Coach, going back to Sunday, you had one of the biggest wins of the season, but then you have to come back and tell the team what had happened yeah. while they were on the court. I wonder how difficult that was to go from ecstasy to despair with the team in, in informing them of the news. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was tough. And uh, it's happened twice this year. I lost a good buddy right when we landed after the Marquette game. Um, and then um, it was good to our program and then, um, and then that. And so we go from, I actually found out about three minute mark of the game um, that Kobe had passed and just tried to f focus in on the game as best I could, and then um, you know we're go we're jumping up and down, and then you know I was a Michael Jordan fan, you know more my age group, and but my players were big Kobe fans, so you went from complete jubilation to tears. Um, so 
um, there was a lot of counseling from that point on in the locker room. Some people were afraid to fly, okay, right after that happened, so he had to hold her hand, basically. Um, so it was tough. You know, it was, it was tough on the guys. Kids are resilient. Uh, I think what's been great is all the great stuff that's come up about Kobe since, not just as a player, but as a person. I just found this morning he went to church that morning with his daughter. You know, that's, that's big time. And um, so just, just really good stuff that uh, has come out. It's really helped our guys. Not only learn about what a competitor he was, but what he was doing to help people in the world. And, you know, you're always asking your guys to do more, not just be basketball players, but they're in position to make an impact. And I think we do a good job with that with our guys, and they could learn from Kobe how they can help. So thank you. Yeah.